Hi, this is Susie Oliver. Uh, today I wanted to show you my ultimate calculator. I wrote this in C Sharp uh, at the end of my first C Sharp class. Um, we had the uh, unique opportunity to have um, uh, pro professional programmers only in our class. Uh, so we were able to kind of start competing with each other and feeding off of each other's ideas and we'd go to class and uh, show each other what, what we had done and how we did it. So uh, we got to advance a lot faster than we would in, in a normal classroom setting. Okay, this will do traditional um, evaluation stuff. You can type into it like 3 plus 4 times 5. Okay, now if you get your little cheapy calculators out, um, that's going to compute 3 plus 4 is 7 times 5 is 35, which is incorrect. Um, according to the uh, order of operations in algebra, you're supposed to do multiplication before addition, so we should end up with 23, and we do. Um, then I can also enter things here. I can do the same thing, 3 plus plus 4 is, let's see, and then times 5 equals 23. Um, and this is uh, also speaking, I'm not sure if it's recording the, the speech or not, um, but anyway it is speaking in the background whenever you press a key it says what you just pressed. Okay, so I'm entering a, uh, an equation here. And then I say grab. And I can pan left or right, up and down. And I can put more than one out there. Okay, and this is a, a, a programmable uh, graphing scientific calculator, uh, it does take um, commands. The commands start with a backslash. Um, second graph is going to be graph 1. The first graph was graph 0. So I can say color 1 equal orange. And it changes to orange. Um, it will do uh, pretty much everything you expect a scientific calculator to do. It's got secant, cosecant, and so on. I've also got the arcs and the hyperbolics of everything. Most scientific calculators don't put uh, like the hyperbolic cosecant or the arc cosecant. Um, they just do some, some more basic stuff. But I've got the formulas for all of them coded in here. Um, and um, let's see, we can also look at the table for uh, the most recent graph. That would be the sign. If we look at the table, so when x is negative 10, uh, y is 47. When x is negative 9.5, y is 39.75. Oh, I'm sorry, that's, the, um, that's this, this graph the first one. Yes, when x is 0, y is negative 3, right there. So that's the, the first graph. Now we'll do some other things that uh, most calculators don't, don't do. Um, I can do things like change words to numbers. Uh, so you've forgotten what a trillion was. 
actually that's not going to work because I don't have a 1 in front of it. So I'm going to have to try it again. There we go. Um, and then if I want to change numbers to words. Okay, and it'll, it will change it to words. Um, I had written one in um, at the beginning of the class that changed words to, uh, wrote a little program, uh, a class called Number Name. Uh, that changed numbers to words and words to numbers, and it would do it in scientific notation also. Um, I started to do it in uh, Roman numerals and ran out of time, so I still might go back and do that later. Um, anyway, it will, uh, that worked really nicely, but uh, we were limited to 2 billion because that was the largest integer that it, uh, the computer could hold. Um, and so uh, I didn't like that. So I went back and did it a different way. Uh, now I can go up to uh, over just over 300 digits. I believe it's 306 digits uh, that we have names for up to that length of a number. And I did that by using uh, number strings. Now the way I handled all the functions on all these keys, um, I set up uh, a list of delegates um, and then that kept me from having to write nearly so much code. Um, let's see. What else? Oh, if you want to do like the, um, uh, say you're adding fractions together and you've forgotten how to do uh, your common denominator, you can do the least common denominator least common denominator and least common multiple are the same thing. And uh, say your denominators are 14 and 7. So your least common denominator is 14. Let's say you get like 4 and 5. Okay, so your least common denominator for that's going to be 20. So if you got one fourth plus two fifths, you're going to have to, to change them both into twentieths. So that's basically it. Uh, this was about 50 pages of code, but if I hadn't uh, um, been uh, using delegates and so on, it would have been a lot more code than it is. I did add a thing on the speech mode. You can turn the speech off if you don't like it. Um, and on trig mode, you can switch to degrees. It was in radians there. And you can save what you've done and then load it from before. That's where the programmable feature comes in. When you load it, it will run again. So um, that's about it.